This is the second section of our lecture. Uh, it involves multifocal motor neuropathy. MMN is a rare disorder characterized by asymmetric multifocal weakness of distal segments involving particularly the upper limbs without objective sensory involvement. There is usually atrophy or degeneration of both arms and legs is, may be present in some cases. This disorder is slowly progressive over several years and the exact cause of this MMN is unknown. In this section, we will discuss about the criteria of assessment. What is the diagnostic criteria of multifocal motor neuropathy? And what are the treatment options that are available for multifocal motor neuropathy? Multifocal motor neuropathy is defined as a distinctive but uncommon neuropathy that presents as slowly progressive motor weakness and atrophy in distribution of selected nerve trunks that which are mainly the ventral nerve root, ventral roots because the, those uh, ventral roots are responsible for providing the motor control associated with sites of persistent focal motor conduction block in the same nerve trunks. Now, we say that multifocal mo motor neuropathy is a slowly progressive disease often involving the upper limbs of the patients. It is an asymmetric weakness and it is mostly subacute in onset. It starts focally as a mononeuropathy in the distal upper limbs and the patient presents with the signs and symptoms of wrist, uh, difficulty in wrist and finger extension or reduced hand grip. It may spread to contralateral hand and both legs and the patients sometimes complain of fasciculations and cramps with or without normal muscle bulk that are maintained until late in the disease. It is characteristic of multifocal motor neuropathy to involve the upper limbs. The ulnar, radial and median nerves are the most commonly involved in this condition. Deep tendon reflexes in case of multifocal motor neuropathy may or may not be diminished normal or brisk. This is one of the differentiating features from motor neuron disease. The sensory fibers are almost always spared in case of multifocal motor neuropathy. There is never involvement of sensory fibers in case of MMN. It has a tendency to affect upper limbs or arms more frequently than legs and sometimes in very rare cases there might be involvement of cranial nerves bulbar muscles phrenic nerves and respiratory muscles but it is very rare and whenever a patient has involvement of any of these muscles or cranial nerves they might require ventilatory support now multifocal motor neuropathy presents in most commonly in males in around more than 75% of the cases. Less than 50% of patients present with high titers of polyclonal IgM antibody to ganglioside GM1. It is uncertain how this finding relates to the discrete foci of motor conduction block, but these ganglioside, high concentration of these ganglioside GM1 antibodies are normally found in nodes of Ranvier of peripheral nervous system. Pathology reveals that uh, there, there is demyelination and mild inflammatory changes at the sites of conduction block, particularly the nodes of Ranvier, where the myelin is being uh, tipped off. Some of the cases of multifocal motor neuropathy are confused with the lower motor neuron forms of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis 
which will, we will discuss later in this section. Now, there is a variant multifocal motor neuropathy with conduction block. In this, uh, in this variant, the, the low motor neuron function is regionally and chronically disrupted by focal blocks in conduction. So there is not a complete block, instead there are focal blocks in conduction. The elevated serum titers of mono and polyclonal antibodies to gangliocyte GM1 antibodies are found in association with these uh, focal blocks. These findings, because of these findings, it is hypothesized that these antibodies, the GM1 gangliocyte antibodies, they produce selective, focal and paranodal demyelination of motor neurons involving the paranodal areas of peripheral nervous system. Multifocal motor neuropathy with conduction block. It is not typically associated with corticospinal signs. In contrast with the amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, it responds dramatically to therapy with immu intravenous immunoglobulins or the chemotherapy. Now, the diagnostic criteria includes CSF examination and electrophysiologic findings. The CSF protein is usually normal in case of multifocal motor neuropathy. If we talk about the electrophysiologic findings, we will find patchy focal demyelination in motor nerves, sparing the sensory nerves. Conduction block will be found which is defined as the reduced compound muscle action potential amplitude. In case of multifocal motor neuropathy, this conduction block occurs along non-myelin associated areas. And there is normal sensory nerve conduction study. So this is the diagnostic findings of electromyography. The criteria for assessment. This is the diagnostic criteria which was given by European Federation of Neurological Societies guidelines. It is known as core criteria and for the definitive diagnosis of multifocal motor neuropathy, both the supportive clinical criteria and the exclusion criteria should be fulfilled. Now, the core criteria, it is slowly progressive or stepwise progressive focal asymmetric limb weakness. That is motor involvement in motor nerve distribution of at least two nerves for more than one month. If signs and symptoms are present only in distribution of one nerve only, a possible diagnosis can be made, but not a definitive diagnosis. No objective sensory abnormalities except for minor sense abnormalities in the lower limb. Now, supportive clinical criteria says that predominant upper limb involvement should be present. There should be decreased or absent tendon reflexes in the affected limb. Absence of cranial nerve involvement. Cramps and fasciculations should be present in the affected limb. And response in terms of disability or muscle strength to immunomodulatory treatment. This is the supportive clinical criteria for multifocal motor neuropathy. The exclusion criteria includes upper motor neuron signs should be excluded. Marked bulbar involvement should not be present in MMN. Sensory impairment more marked than minor vibration, loss in lower lim limbs, and diffuse symmetric weakness during initial weeks. These all points should not be present in order for the definitive diagnosis of mul multifocal motor neuropathy. The minimal criteria for diagnosis requires this core cl clinical criteria fulfillment of all exclusion criteria and normal sensory nerve conduction, conduction studies in the distribution of affected motor nerves. 
If we talk about the treatment of multifocal motor neuropathy, it usually responds to high-dose intravenous immunoglobulins, but there is no response to glucocorticoids and plasma exchange. Periodic retreatment is required at least monthly in order to maintain the benefit. In case of refractory patients or patients who do not respond to intravenous immunoglobulins, we can go for the immunosuppressive agents such as the rituximab or cyclophosphamide. This table here, it is telling us about the classical features of multifocal motor neuropathy and motor neuron disease. The clinical features of multifocal motor neuropathy include asymmetric, more distal, more than proximal involvement, upper limb, more than lower limb weakness without sensory loss. Some patients with subjective sensory loss, pain and fatigue and decreased tendon reflexes. However, on the other hand, in motor neuron disease, which is the low or the low motor neuron variant of motor neuron disease, which is the amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. There is asymmetric weakness without sensory loss, may have upper motor neuron signs and cognitive involvement, usually more prominent muscle atrophy, and increased tendon reflexes. Lab features show us that the CSF protein is usually normal or slightly elevated and 40 to 50% patients may have IgM ganglioside antibodies. In case of motor neuron disease, the CSF protein is usually normal or slightly elevated, but there are no significant titers of IgM ganglioside antibodies. In case of electrodiagnostic findings, there is multifocal demyelinating motor neuropathy with or without conduction block. This is pathognomic of multifocal motor neuropathy. However, in motor neuron disease, there are no focal demyelinating lesions, active and chronic motor exon loss, and fasciculations in multiple regions are found. Multifocal motor neuropathy is treated with intravenous immunoglobulins, rituximab, and cyclophosphamide, and it does not respond to steroids or plasma exchange. However, there is only supportive treatment available for motor neuron disease. Multifocal motor neuropathy is difficult to distinguish from motor neuron disease because both present with asymmetric distal progressive weakness without numbness. So there are certain features that distinguish multifocal motor neuropathy from motor neuron disease. Those features include that multifocal motor neuropathy affects upper limbs predominantly but not exclusively. There are no respiratory or bulbar involvement. Multifocal motor neuropathy does not present with upper motor neuron signs. Cramps and fasciculations are, the, are found in more than 50% of the patients of multifocal motor neuropathy. And multifocal motor neuropathy has a characteristic electrophysiological pattern that is the hallmark of its diagnosis. This was all about multifocal motor neuropathy. Keep watching scaria.com.